Hey everyone, welcome back to the Garage Build series. It is a lovely 25 and a half degrees Celsius today here in Edmonton, and I can tell you that because we've completed electrical rough-in and we've passed inspection. You know what I found to be a little underwhelming? Acceptable. That's as good as you can get when you pass an inspection after all this work. Anyways, let me take you through the electrical plan, and I'm far from an electrician. In fact, electrical is my worst area when it comes to cars too, so just humor me a little bit. Starting with the main service line, that's this thick black cord coming in right here. This is a 60 amp panel. Now I know you're probably already thinking, oh my God, this guy is doing all this work and he's only bringing in 60 amps to the garage. Well, yes, the budget is not unlimited. And the truth is our old house only has a hundred amp service running to it. And there was no way I was paying extra for the city to run 200 plus amp service to the house, just so I could get hundred amps in the garage. So we're gonna be doing this for now. And I'm about to show you the rest of the plan that already has blown the electrical budget wide open. So trust me, this is enough. Also giving credit where credit's due, the electrician was the one that encouraged me to get as large of a service out here as possible. The original plan for this garage only had a 40 amp panel in mind, but he said that a nice selling feature of houses these days, not that I think we're gonna be going anywhere anytime soon now, is the ability to charge an electric vehicle. Personally, I'm not on board with the electric vehicles quite yet, but it's nice to know that we'll be able to do it winter if that time comes and we'll get a little extra value out of the house in the long run. Before I get into some of the features that were installed, I just want to give a piece of wisdom that I learned throughout this process. Now I fancy myself a planner of types, but I have to say this garage took a whole new form when it came time to figure out the electrical plan. I tried to think of what the setup would be in the future and plan ahead for lighting and plugs and switches and everything like that. But what I found was that it wasn't until I was standing in the constructed space, kind of walking through and imagining myself in here, is when I realized that I had no idea what I was doing and I needed way more time to think. So if you're going through this process, get in here as soon as the structure comes up and really think about how you're gonna operate in the space. With all that in mind, how about the north wall? This is the only one that I actually had a pretty good idea of what I wanted and needed. It's pretty simple. I need a 30 amp plug, which is what this is, to operate the hydraulic lift. And I wanted two lights that are on the actual side of the wall. There's another guy in the neighborhood that's already done something like this. And he said the very first thing that he did when he built his lift space was added lights lower down. Because what you don't realize is that as soon as the car goes up, you've lost all of your light. So I went ahead and got two extra sockets put in and we can run some nice long strip lighting down at around the two or three foot level to bring in light, whether I just have the cars on jacks and it's only about a foot off the ground or whether it's six feet in the air and I've got some nice light shining up. These two lower lights here will be run off of their own switch right here. And speaking of dedication, this circuit here that's dedicated just for the 30 amp, we have a couple more of those. So there's a 20 for general use right here. There's another independent circuit 20 up here that I'll be using for my compressor. And then there is a dedicated 40, which I'll be using for welding. Of course, you gotta have a couple plugs. We have one, two, and three. Here's a fun fact for you. And please fact check me in the comment section. We were chatting with the IT friend of the electrician. And when we were talking about welding, he said, hey, did you know that while you're welding, it knocks down the Wi-Fi signal? Now, I don't know what type of welding that might be specific to, but that being the case, and since we had a trench open in the backyard, what we've done is brought through two additional Cat5 hard lines from the home. These hard lines run up and all the way around, and of course, we will have a router up here giving off Wi-Fi, but it's nice to know that worst comes to worst, we can always tap into one of a few internet connections right at the source. Now, this is not the only orange box in here, there are two more up here, and this is what I'm talking about when the budget starts getting blown open. So what I did was I started running speaker wire too. I figured I'm on the computer, I do these videos, I watch a lot of YouTube and how to's while I'm even working. So if I'm gonna have a computer in here, maybe a TV eventually, well, we ought to have some sound too. And that is exactly what this big bundle is right here. This is all speaker wiring, but you'll notice there are more than two wires here. And that is because there are six total. So what you can see here, 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 and there are more external speaker lines. So we're gonna have music outside too. 
So sometime in the near future, I'll mount up a receiver right here to take on all these wires, and then I can match each of them to the zones that they're in and control it through a wireless app. And I'll have the networking up here too, the modem. And it's awesome because this all tucks in really nicely behind the door. This is not lost space at all. Speaking of which, the heater mounts up here too, nice and high out of the way. That brown wire is the other side of the thermostat for the heater that's yet to be plumbed fully in. So in a lot of ways, I'm kind of glad that I blew the budget on a lot of this hardware. What I've come to learn is that this garage is more of a hub than anything. It started as sort of a, a man cave car project kind of space, but truly it's given all new meaning to the exterior of the home too. It allows us to have different music spaces outside and relax in different ways, have Wi-Fi more readily. But what is also happening is that it's gonna become the hub for our irrigation as well. So what you can't see super well is that there are additional PVC raceways that have been run outside. I'll show you them in a second, because what we need to do is bring at least a dozen or more wires, one dedicated to each irrigation pump that'll be spread throughout the property. And all of that needs to get wired into a controller also mounted in this area. Here's a quick peek of that raceway running on the outside of the building. So on the other side runs five feet out because the sidewalk will be four feet. Out from the other side in the yard, we can continue to trench from here and run the wires right here. So in addition to that one, we have the dedicated raceway that runs in the same trench as power, just for the internet service. And then we have the main power itself. This trench by code has to be two feet deep that carries power. So we run that, fill in about a foot of dirt, and then we run the additional raceway right on top of it. I'll wait for the interior finishing video to actually show you the lights, but for now, suffice to say that I've opted for two lights right above the workspace here, another one towards the back, and then on the double side, pretty simply one, two, and then one, two, kind of around the walkway and where there's gonna be more workbenches too. As for exterior lighting attached to the building, it's pretty simple, one, two, three, four pot lights will be coming on both sides right under the soffit. Of course, garage door motors need power too, which is why we have one more right in the middle of the double side, but we don't have that type of space luxury over here. I need to keep this open for the top of a car, hopefully one day. So that means I'm going to be doing a wall mounted motor right here, and that should be really cool. Finally, there are two little lights up in the attic right there, and then a switch when you come up the hatch to control it. So that's all she wrote. You may think this is pretty simple, but for me, this was a pretty exciting process to map this out and make a whole bunch of changes on our original plan. And I'm really looking forward to the utility that this is all gonna give me. You can see that a little bit of insulation has already started, and that's where we're gonna pick up next time. The crew from Gray Bear Renovations is already coming tomorrow, and they're gonna be working on the insulation and vapor barrier. Then we'll be moving on to the interior OSB walls, and then from there, final lighting, and I'm going to paint. As always, thank you so much for watching. I truly hope you're enjoying the Garage Build series, and I'm really looking forward to you actually getting into this space. I'm sitting on so many car parts right now that I can't wait to get in on the B7 and B8 and start putting out more product and part videos on the channel. By the way, did you notice this? There is an enormous hole in our alley right now, and that has everything to do with the main gas line. I'll encourage you to go check me out on Instagram. You can find me at Figure It Outie because I make posts on there like this one. And you'll often find the little sneak peeks on there that are a week or two ahead of what actually hit the YouTube channel. But what's going on here is that the city went for a dig over our main gas line. And then they dug some more because it was a lot deeper than they thought. And we are eventually going to get it done. But if you look at that little skinny line out there, that's the main gas line. It's old, it's of the unsleeved variety, and you can't build a building over it. We did, and now we have to get this new one done. So there's been a bit of a delay. They've got to get more different machines. They've got to hydrovac this out. They've got to shore up the sides so it's safe to work in there and the sides don't spill in. So they'll take care of that tomorrow. And finally, when that's done, we can address the final concrete that will be in this area. Gray bear, gray rabbit, Subscribe, notification bell, you know what to do. Thanks guys, see you next time.